next guest uh, on the ticket, 105 the ticket here on the Tom Bernard Show dot com. Uh, go, Mike and Bob, you know who it is. Yep. Back to you. It is one of my favorite people and one of my favorite coaches and the greatest coach in the history of college football. The most wins, 489 wins. Uh, re- recently retired after more than almost seven decades of coaching, John Gallardi from St. John's University. And it's always great to hear John's voice and to talk to him. Well, thank you very much. Now, John, you, well, I'm going to turn you over to Tom because you, uh, I, he hasn't heard all the stories that you have to tell. Now, John, I will tell you this today. I was doing a, uh, a charity event, a place called Open Arms. It's a wonderful, wonderful charity. And Tim Heron was there, a lot of, a lot of great people, Bob Enfield, Laurie Enfield. And a young man playing in that tournament, he didn't want me to name who it was, St. John's graduate. He said that a couple of weeks ago they had a little soiree, and they had to tell you it was for something else because if, if they told you it was in your honor, you wouldn't have come. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, he just said you were one of the, and I don't want to embarrass you here, but he said you're truly one of the nicest men, the most talented men he had ever met. This this kid thinks the world of you, and I'm sure you have thousands of young men out there that, that feel the same way. Well, I hope that's true. <laughs> well, I hope it's true. I can find one guy like me. Uh, it's, it's true as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Coach, this is Don Shelby. It's good to talk to you again. How you been? Well, nice seeing you, hon. TV. Well, I you're miss, the one. I miss seeing you on the sidelines. You, yeah, Tom just said you're the one. You're the one who misses me. It's, it's great to have you. I, I told a story about you uh, some weeks ago. Uh, you and I had had a conversation, and you had told a story about uh, who one of the best uh, athletes you'd ever had in your program, and you said it was uh, Jim Lehman. Yeah, that's and, right. Jim Lehman played for me. Led the country in, in scoring way back in the early 50s. Uh, he played in those days with, he had to play the whole game, never came out, played a uh, face mask. And uh, matter of fact, some of my players uh, later asked me, well, uh, if, if Lehman, and if Jim Lehman had uh, gotten some relief, played just strictly offense, carried the ball more. Uh, well, first of all, he asked me how many touchdowns he had scored. I said he scored, I think it was 17. He said, well, okay, if he'd have played today and carried the more, ball more times and and had a more sophisticated attack, and how many touchdowns do you think he did? I said, well, I think he'd get to, I'd say, seven or eight. Well, well why he went only seven or eight? I said, my God, you got to remember he's 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, that's one of my favorite story stories. I tell about Jim. Jim, Jim is the father, of course. I don't know if you know that of Tom Lehman, the great golfer. Mm-hmm. And oh. Tom was all set to come to St. John's. He was a very good high school quarterback at Alexandria, at Alexander, uh, Minnesota, up the road. And and just before the season started, Jim called me and he said that. Uh, he, uh, I hate to tell you, but Tom has decided to go to the University of Minnesota. I said, well, well, well why, why is that? I said, is he, is he to play football? He said, no, 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 he's going to play golf. I said, for God's sakes, Jim, what the heck kind of future do you think he's got in golf? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Coach, I think it's unbelievable what you did as a coach and your method of getting to those 489 wins without hitting in practice, without having spring football, without having a whistle, without having a blocking sled, none of that. It was just rehearsal, learn in hundreds, and uh, and let the good times roll. Coach, why didn't you uh, come down to Clemson there in South Carolina and recruit? I love that. <laughs> Man, this is Eddie McDaniel. I love that. Well, you know, talking about Jim Lehman, we're on a, him. He was one of the reasons we quit hitting in practice. I remember one of my assistant coaches had talked me into scrimmaging, and uh, by God, if Jim Lehman doesn't get hurt, well, you lose your. It's tough enough to beat teams of your best ball players, but when your best guy's sidelined, it's. <laughs> It's impossible almost. So after he got hurt in the early 50s, I figured whatever we, whatever
every little get we might have gained, we lost completely by losing Jim Lehman. And uh, uh, that was the last time we scrimmaged in St. John's. Red, that was the last time. Yep. That's a great, that's a magnificent story. Coach, one of my favorite all-time quotes of yours, uh, and I think every coach in, a, in high school, college, and pros should be able to hear this and be able to absorb it the way you did and to make it a reality. Uh, when you said that every year we lose irreplaceable guys, but thankfully, more irreplaceable guys show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Now, now the story is we lose irreplaceable coaches, but there will be an irreplaceable guy to show up to replace me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about you, Coach Velarde, is, again, I, I meet people all the time that, that played for you over the years, and yes, there were all those wins and all those great seasons, but you have to be most proud of the young men that you helped bring along uh, in their lives, because when the guys are 18, 19, 20 years old, they're very vulnerable to making not only mistakes on the football field, but mistakes in life. And you just didn't have a whole lot of those guys. These are fine young men that, that you brought along. Well, you know, that's, that's absolutely right. We we just had a reunion of the 63 national championship team, the 50th year reunion. 50 year reunion. Oh my God, all of these guys got old. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly recognize me. They were so old. <laughs> John, John, you got to tell about how all, over all these decades you've avoided mirrors. <laughs> I don't know. But, you're, but you're absolutely right. As the years, I told these guys that as much as they had done and accomplished in, by winning that first national championship, that that what they did with their lives, and there were so many great successes there, uh, such as the. Uh, uh, Ken Rarian, who became the the chair of the Minnesota University School of Management, Carlson School of Management, plus all kinds of other guys, great successes in many different careers, lawyers, businessmen, all this. That's the course is, I think the the test of what what we we did with those guys. Well, I don't know that we did anymore so much. They came as pretty dark on good grades. Well, and by the way, before I leave. I tell you who, who we beat for that national championship. They were the national black champions. Guys like Otis Taylor was on that team. Whoa, very View. Remember him? Chiefs, great receiver. Yeah, he was the guy that did the Vikings in when they first showed up the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, that's the kind of team you can imagine. These what, what what it is about these black talented athletes? I don't know what it is. They dominate football, and at that time. <laughs> this this team dominated Grambling and Florida A and M and all the black teams in the South. And there we met them. We we're the first white team they ever played, I think. And uh, somehow, some way, don't ask me how we beat them. I I always say we had two the most uh, formidable uh, things on our side, forces on our side. We had we had ignorance and stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, uh, just an honor to share airtime with you, and thank you so much for your time today. You are an amazing man and loved by every, everyone I've ever met that have met you. They, they love you, man. Hello? Hello. I just wanted to make sure that you knew how, how much the guys who played for you, and actually not just the guys who played for you, the guys that sat up in the stands with their girlfriends loved you too, man. <laughs> it's been a real... I, what I've enjoyed about sports is meeting all the great people that have come into my by my way, guys. I, oh, I could start with the one I, I admire maybe most, Bud Grant. And of course, I was fortunate to coach two of his sons. And uh, it's getting to the point where they know Mike Grant more better than they know Bud. Yeah. That's, that shows you something. Well, that's his time right there. Coach Gillardy, thank you so much for your time today. Again, an honor to share our time with you, sir. My pleasure. Thanks, Coach. Come up and see you sometime soon. Thank you. Bob and Mike, uh, what a, and Samantha, by the way, thank you so much for lining that up. Just to, what a what a great ten minutes that was. He's a great guy. A great guy. Funny still. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy's. I mean, he's just a treasure trove of stories. 
He is indeed. He, he, is. Uh, he is one of those guys where, you know, he stands up in front of a room and he pretty much owns it, even at his age right now. I've been told by people all around town that when he comes to speak somewhere, even at this age, he owns the room as soon as he walks in. No question about it. He, uh, when he retired, um, he said something so elementally true uh, that uh, the quote stood alone. It could have been a headline in any newspaper. Uh, the line was, I thought I could coach forever, but forever is a little longer than I thought. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a magnificent line. Wow. You guys, thank you so much for your, your help as well. I just, um, Mike and Bob, these, these uh, changeovers, switchovers have just gone very, very well. What I have to do now during the break, because we do have to get the break here, but I have to sit now for the next three minutes and convince Eddie McDaniel <laughs> that an all-white team beat an all-black team in 1960. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. He took it but as soon as, as soon as John Glory started talking about that, he took his headsets off. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that time, all the black guys were playing up here. <laughs> so he might have been playing a team that Bear Bryant did. They beat him. Because <laughs> Bear Bryant had an all-white guy. <laughs> Bob and Mike, thank you very much. We'll be back with more of Tom Bernard's show. Right after this. Spend your lunch.